Now I'll be discussing the muscle attachments at the lumbar vertebrae. Now why is it important to get to know all these muscles that are getting attached over here? To provide the maintenance of posture and as well as the range of movements that are available at the lumbar vertebrae. Let's first of all look at the anterior aspect of the lumbar vertebrae which gives attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament in the midline. Lateral to the anterior longitudinal ligament, we have the right crux of the diaphragm, which is attached to the upper three lumbar vertebrae and the left crux to the upper two lumbar vertebrae. The transverse processes gives attachment to the various muscles and fascia. Starting from the tips of the transverse processes, which gives attachment to the middle layer of lumbar fascia, the transverse process gives attachment to the sos major muscle and moving laterally is the attachment of quadratus lumborum. And as you move posteriorly, we can observe the attachment of multifidus overlaid by the erector spiny muscles. The upper and lower borders gives attachment to the lateral intertransverse muscles. The upper and lower borders also gives attachment to the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligament in front and behind. Ligamentum flavum is attached throughout the vertebral column to the lamina posteriorly and provides stability to the vertebral column. Intertransverse ligament is attached to the transverse processes of the corresponding vertebrae in the longitudinal manner, again maintaining flexibility and allowing a range of movements. Finally, we have the supraspinous and interspinous ligaments attaching to the corresponding spinous processes. So now we know the different identification points of the lumbar vertebrae and how do we differentiate between a typical and atypical variety of the lumbar vertebrae. So do like, share and comment down below if you have any queries regarding the lumbar vertebrae.